nothing to nothing. You ought to see this stadium with its 90,000 people and only two minutes more to play. It's no longer a Yale versus Hammer game. It's Yale versus Hawks. One man against the field. It's a big order for that Western yokel, and he'll never forget his first trip east. No! Wait a minute! Hawks has the ball! Crazy! It's Hawks! Hawks! Nothing but Hawks! The greatest football player of the age! The one-man game's ended the score is 6 nothing. Hammer wins! We're signing off now, folks, so I'll say goodbye and thank you. This is Gerald Gordon Gladstone speaking. Oh, that! Johnny, you're a knockout. They're goofy about you. We're invited to Stephen Corning's dinner dance tonight. Let's go! <laughs> party you're giving, Allison. Particularly the bar. I'm glad you like it. Ma, you're so slim. I can scarcely believe you're so strong. <laughs> You'd be surprised. So you and Donnie Hawks have been lifelong friends. I'd like to meet him. Who? Your gridiron hero. Johnny? Of course. When? Now. Johnny, you're a hostess. Miss Wall Street Corning. She wants to be taken off my hands. How do you do? How do you do? W would you like to dance? If you like. Sure. People are born lucky. Can you imagine that? I wish I'd picked a rich father. I saw your game today. Oh, you did? Uh-huh. You know, you don't play badly. Oh, thanks. What do you do next? What do you mean? Oh, I mean after graduation. Banking, bonds, Wall Street. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know anything about those things. But our coach is leaving, and they've offered me the job. Well, coaching offers me more money than anything else. And besides, no one's invited me to become a bank president. We are cutting in tonight. Enjoyed your game today, old boy. Top hole. Thanks. He's a go-getter. I understand he had to work his way through college. <laughs> my father worked my way through. <laughs> I say, you're gorgeous tonight, old dear. Quite the best you've done.
interested in the scenery? You won't get away with that when you grow up. With what? Talking with your mouth full. It isn't done. I do it. You always do what you want, don't you? I always know what I want. And usually get it. Don't do that. Looks like a lifeguard showing off in front of a servant girl. And will you please have that cut before you come east again? I'm not coming east again. No? No. If you've nothing better to do, how few of us are going to spend the weekend on our yacht? Well, thanks, but I'm all dated up for the weekend. Well, if you should change your mind, we'll be glad to have you. Steve, I want you to give a young man a chance in the office. What? A football player? Well, he's your type. Why? Because he comes from the West, washed dishes, Worked his way through college? Doesn't know how to wear his clothes? Oh, don't worry about that. I'm going to take him on the yacht for the weekend. Mm. I'll smarten him up, Stevie. Will you please stop calling me Stevie? I'm your father. Oh, don't blame me. Amendment making it a closed season on man hunting. Can't you let him alone? Can't you let him alone? Can't both of you let me alone? You're home. That's fine. Yes, Where's my camera? Come on, Come on, Oh, Mr. Hawk. It's going to be a beautiful night. I'm going abroad Tuesday to be gone a year. Do you want to stay down here with me tomorrow? Well, <laughs> I don't think I'd better. Afraid of me? No. <laughs> Do you do this often? Maybe. I suppose you'd want to go back west with any cold and lovely heiress complex to come between you and your confet girls. I haven't got any confet girls. And if I had, they wouldn't have your complex. Well, I don't think so much of your type, either. Your He-Man Son of the West novelty stuff is a bit tricky. Mm-mm. Nope. I don't think I'd care for it. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care much for your cold and lovely era stuff, either. My, but it's chilly. 
Well, if you'd pull that watsis around you a little closer. I think you'd better go to town with father. I asked him about giving a young man a job. And you know, I think it would do you a lot of good. Oh, Miss Corning. I'd like to thank you for the weekend. Oh, no, not at all. On the whole, I think I should thank you for not making love to me. Why, I never thought of such a thing. You wouldn't, my dear. Well, this is goodbye. Goodbye from the cold and lovely airs. you've been working here? Almost a year, sir. Well, then you ought to know by this time the cardinal principle of business success is to get out from under while the going is good and let the other fellow hold the bag. But those good securities were all the poor woman had in the world. I couldn't ask her to exchange them for your bad stock after I'd given my word of honor. Honor? Oh, no, what does honor to do with it? This is Wall Street. We fight for existence here. I'm afraid you haven't the stuff in you to make good. It takes nerve. Well, I haven't that kind of nerve, sir. Mm. But I thought that... You've no right to think. You're paid to sell our stock. And when you don't sell it, we don't pay you. Understand? Yes, sir. Now, you go after that woman to buy our stuff. Tell her you made a mistake. Tell her anything you like. But get her money or get out of our employ. That's all. Cream or lemon? Nothing, thanks. I'll have a cigarette if you don't mind. My, but the city has changed you. You know, I've been meaning to get hold of you for ever so long. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, you're just in time. I'm leaving town tomorrow. Ah, vacation? Hmm. Quite a long one. I've been fired. Why did Steve fire you? Because I refused to exchange a poor woman's good bonds for some of his worthless stock. I suppose you've just found out that Steve is a crook and that we're all crooks. Mm-mm. But I found out it doesn't matter much how you make your money in this world. It's how much you've got when you quit that counts. My dear boy, Wall Street isn't a football field. And Corning and Company isn't a YMCA. You're quite right, Miss Corning. It's a first-class gambling joint. 
Only they use margin clerks instead of croupiers. Really? Yes, really. Wall Street, Corning and Company. <laughs> Steve Corning and his bucket shop. Supported by the losses of widows, orphans, clerks, and small town speculators. Splendid. As a soapbox agitator, I think you're enormous. And I'll never be a sneaking white collared margin clerk again. And I thought you had the guts to put it over. I'll show you I can put it over. I'm going to take what I want out of the world, too, just as your father does. Only I'm going to use my own hands and take all my own chances. I've learned a lot about Steve Corning. He has a sideline, one he thinks no one knows about. But I know. The next time you see me, I'll be taking money your father wouldn't have the guts to take. Only there'll be no widows or orphans where I'm going to get mine. And to think that I wasted a perfectly good kiss on you. Now that's goodbye from a He-Man son of the West. Spotting the location, they won't be here tomorrow night. Find out if the whole load's coming in. Yes. And send in that amateur. Yes. Give me his recommendations. Sit down, amateur. You got some pretty hot connections. Yes, I figure they're all right. Oh, you do, eh? Well, you ought to be able to sell them booze. Everybody get out. Not you, not you. Give us your proposition. 
It's got to be good because I went to a lot of trouble to get you here. Listen, mister, I'm running this racket. Me, Big John. I don't need no new partners. I got one. We pay salaries and bonuses. If you don't take that, there's nothing doing. I'm sorry, I'm not interested. Wait a minute. If you butt into our game on your own, you're liable to be snuffing a lily. Get me? Pardon me. I get you. Slim, take this guy back to town. His face! His face! Don't you try to kid me, too. No. How many cases? They'll have the whole load in before daylight. I like that idea you got, because it ain't breaking the law. Confidentially, between you and me, that typewriter gal's my sweetheart. And I got a portable radio at home. Uh-huh. Sophie and me will take 30% if you can get the boat. Uh-huh. It's dangerous. It's all profit. I'll meet you at Tony Speakeasy. The... Nix, Nix, don't crank. That driver next to me is the best lip reader in the business. You need a new collar button. I'll fix it, Joe. He's due now. Say, I'm going to show that baby that I'm as good a businessman as he is. I'll beat him at his own game and make him like it. Johnny, I'm with you to the finish. No, Chubby. Mm-mm. You better stay out of this. It's going to be dangerous. Now, you've got money, family, social position, and friends. I'm different. I've, I've got nothing. And if anything happens, there's nobody to care about me. Well, we've been pals for years, haven't we? Oh, sure. Well, Len, you got to count me in. Whatever you do. Besides, how else are you going to get a boat? No, Johnny. It's you and me. To the end. But listen, Chuck. Shh. He's coming. Now go after him. Two minutes, please. Two minutes, darling. But I... He wants these. Don't ring that bell. I've got 300 cases, gold label, Clico, guaranteed vintage, $30 a case, delivered to your yacht 200 miles off Long Island. New land for you, isn't it, Hawks? 
10% cash on delivery. The balance when you're satisfied is genuine. Delivered 200 miles at sea, eh? Yes, sir. Hmm. Well, anyway, you're not breaking the law. I'd be taking the risk. That's why I'm selling it to you cheaper than you can buy it at the winery in France. Sold. Closed. I notify your captain where to pick me up. Thank you, Mr. Corning. Only one minute, darling. We're taking big chances, Slim. I'm getting nervous. Well, ain't we getting 30% of everything Hawks gets from Big John? Yeah, but I'm thinking what'll be happening if Big John and Fishface get on to it. We better be thinking about the Corsair. The Caseta was nothing but sails. All around Rocky Point in about an hour. That'd put her... Wait a minute. I got it. And Slim. Shopped out. Slim and Sophie, West Indies, received your message. I'm going after the Quesada and Big John's deck load. Wish me luck. Your partner, Johnny Hawks. Oh, gee, Slim. I tell you, I'm getting nervous. Then don't come here anymore. That's a purse-sainer. It is not. She's got a gun on her forward deck. She can't be a coast guard. We're 200 miles offshore. You'll be good, Skipper. Big John will get him for this. Fish 
The caseta goes out tonight. Here's the wine list. And spell Paul Roger like they do in France, sweetheart. Paul Roger, you ignoramus. Come here, fish face. Another boatload hijacked. That amateur has jipped me out of a half a million bucks. Well, that kind of takes him out of the amateur class, don't it, boss? How did they get rid of his stuff? Your stuff? Some swell on the high seas takes the whole load. But he never picks on anybody but me. And how does he always know just where to find my boat? Are they, darling? What do you think's coming aboard? The Corning. I just got a radio from Slim, Chubb. The Caseta's sailing at midnight with a cargo of Paul Roger. Bendix coming aboard, too. Corning will buy that. 1914 vintage. Uh, it's too bad Allison had to get herself engaged to Bendix. Father's my only customer, Miss Corning. Really, John? To kiss a woman and then call her Miss Corning? Come on, Chubb, I'm just dying to see this cracker box. Guns and everything. Well, Mr. Corning, would you be interested in about $40,000 worth of Paul Roger? Oh, I know it's a large dose, but this is the greatest bargain I've ever offered. No. Now listen, Mr. Corning. I say, how small those holes are. Oh, we cover them at night. No light at all when we're working. Garlic. Ooh. Oh, that's great for you. Make you strong. Oh. Duck. Duck. Ducking. Engine room. Mm, dirty. Grimy. Duck. Here's where we keep the stuff. Some capacity. Mm, what an odor. Beastly. Lovely. These are our quarters. Gee, this is a berry. What, Betty's? Never mind, Richard. I'm sure I made a mistake in firing you, Hawks. Oh, tell me, in your operations, uh, how do you usually pick up your goods? Well, you don't divulge your trade secrets, do you, Mr. Corning? No. Well? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Corning. 
To me, this is the most interesting part of the boat. That. Choice. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be on the hotel myself tomorrow to welcome you and the uh, Paul Roger. When do you sail? Midnight. Good. You can get packed all right, can't you? But, but, but. Then it's all settled. Bendick and I will be on board in plenty of time. Too dangerous, Allison. Well, don't be absurd, Allison. You can go with me tomorrow on the Sultana. We're going to meet their boat. How nice. But we'll be waiting for you, Steve, on this boat. Well, uh, what can I do? I can't handle her. Benty can't handle her. Nobody can handle her. So I say anything. Well, I'll say something. This is my boat. We're sailing at midnight, and we're sailing alone. What a he-man you've turned out to be. Thanks. You know, I'm sorry I can't stay and see the corsair sweep down upon its prey and all that sort of thing. Ha, 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 ha. What did you bring her on this boat for? Don't be silly. Don't you know what we're going into? Uh, uh, yes, na naturally. Listen, old chap. I expect you to avoid any danger while she's aboard. Oh, you do, eh? But you're her fiancé. That's your responsibility and another thing. You keep her below till we're through the danger zone. <laughs> Sure, until you fill the danger zone. Tell me, Richard. Are you really my fiancé? Or am I just exercising you? Here. 
Didn't I tell you we shouldn't be seen together? Don't I know it? I can't get the Corsair. Well, you gotta get him. I know I gotta, but I can't. Well, you gotta. If I don't, they'll all be blown to pieces. There's one chance. They're short of cook on the Caseta, and I told Fishface I'd get him one. Meaning me? Meaning you. I can't cook. Well, you'll cook this time and like it. Oh, all right. Now, you go aboard. And that'll give you a chance somewhere to tip off the course there, not to touch the deck load. You said it. How much time have I got? She's sailing in about an hour. Oh. That slob fish face asked me to come back to the office and take some cables, and I, I don't want him to suspect nothing. And look out for this fish face. He's no sucker. If he pulls anything or gets you in a jam, you got to outsmart him. Make love to him. Let him think you're crazy about him. He'll be easy for you after that. I got you. Oh, gee, Sim. Maybe. Maybe. Now, kid, there ain't no maybes. You wanted me to cook, didn't you? Well, I'm cooking. Hey, I got your second. You know, that bum stomach of yours won't stand for no fooling. I'm sticking to the milk, ain't I? Yeah. You better take that. I can't spend nothing on the crusader. I gotta go. All right. Take care of yourself. Sure. Watch your reach. Sure. Lay off the fried stuff. Don't forget what I told you about fish face. Now the Casado will sail in 20 minutes. Say, it was nice of you to get Slim to cook for the boys. Too bad Big John had to plant the deck cargo full of pineapples to surprise the Corsair. <laughs> Big John's a smart guy. He figured he had some squealers in the organization. But he didn't know just who they was. So he thought of the cook gag. No one they'd want to get aboard the Caseta, so they could tip off the Corsair. We were suspicious of you. But we didn't know who your partner was. But now... Wait a minute. You know, being a dead mall ain't gonna help Slim none.
And with me loving you like I did. To think that you and Slim had helped the Corsair build Gus out of a half million. I told him he couldn't put nothing over on you. I told him. Too bad he didn't listen. <laughs> Oh, don't cry, Peaches. It'll spoil your looks. And that dumb egg ain't worth it. Say, you don't think for one minute Slim's my sweetie, do you? Did you think I was Slim's Mo? You did. I can see it in your face. And you love me. Me that wouldn't let a man touch me. Did you ever see me let anyone get fresh with me? Did you? Did I ever let you get fresh with me? Did I? No, you bet your life I didn't. And now, not because I want to be on the level and, and help my brother, you frame it. And you call it love. Slim, your brother? Why didn't you tip me off? He was afraid to think less of me for letting me work at this racket. If you... If you'd let me tip him off before she sailed, I'd be willing to be somebody's mall. Oh, I'm crazy about you, lovely. And I'm nuts over you, white man. Give that to Big John on the Caseta. It's got to square slim. Better move fast, Pepper Mama, or I won't let you get out of that door. Uh, you're wonderful. Brother, Ray. Why, a dirty little double-crossing pelican trying to give me the works? Got him tied? Have we? You double-crossing crook. I ought to tear your squealing tongue out. Fish face. Yes, sir. How many men you got besides the crew? Twenty, sir. Well, keep them below till I tell you what to do with them. You understand? Yes, sir. There's a boat coming to stern of us. Might be the Corsair, sir. Now get this. When they come aboard us, don't put up any battle. Let them win. Right, sir. Now go up on deck and make sure it's the right boat. Right, sir. If that squealer makes a peep or a move, let him have the same thing his Corsair friends are going to get. You dirty rat. Yes, sir. The way she's traveling, she'll overhaul us in ten minutes. Well, I'll bring the casino, Chubb. That's us. But surely you're not going to do this hijacking with Allison on board. No. Don't be silly, Richard. I wouldn't miss this excitement for the world. But, 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 but I forbid it. Allison. You mustn't go on deck. It's too dangerous. Go <laughs> <laughs> deck. Now, you stay in there till I say you can come on deck. <laughs>
get your deck load. That's what I thought. All right, boys, take her. the whole deck load? They're stuck on the last of it on the Corsair now. They got enough dynamite aboard now to blow up the Swiss Navy. <laughs> In just about three minutes, you're gonna hear the fireworks. Sure makes me nervous the way they're handling this stuff. Yeah, make that for two, buddy. They've got their engines started. Good. I always did hate dangerous neighbors. Did you ever think what they'd have done to us if they'd have found the bombs in the cases instead of the booze? Well, what would they have done? They'd have sure come on board again. You saw their one pounders. Chris Face. Yes, sir. Did you do what I told you? In case they got wise to the bombs and come aboard again? Did I? <laughs> Well, I guess in that case, if you had your choice, you'd choose to get blown up by the bombs, huh, Fish Face? Say, if they ever come aboard again, it'd be just too terrible for them. <laughs> <laughs> it'd serve them right, too, the dirty crooks. Oh, nobody can put anything over on Big John. Don't I know it? Well... It's just too bad they didn't come back. Better luck next time, boss. Hey! The spirit beat it! Huh? Come on, let's get it! Wait a minute. Stay where you are. I'll get him. Great Caesar! Look! Slim. He's trying to say something. I can't hear a thing. I can read his lips. B O. They're shooting at him. They got him. Eric, Peter, all hands, quick! Get Allison and everyone into that boat. Why? Because we've hijacked a cargo of bombs. Oh. Come out of that engine room. Overhaul that boat. Stay in the boat. Come on, boys. Where are you going? I am going up the ramp. For the love of Mike, don't let Allison come aboard. Keep her under cover. I want the man who shot Slim. If you don't turn him over, I'll put every one of you on the spot. Hello, amateur. So you turned out to be just a bloomin' red, didn't you? You murdered my partner, eh? See that? <laughs> and there's another one. And another one. <laughs> Drop them guns. 
Heist them. Come on up, boys. Give me yours. So you want to play pirate? <laughs> well, I'm going to play it with you. Only we're going to put modern touches to it. Fish face. Yes, sir. Bring up seven cases of champagne. Yes, sir. With ropes around them. Yes, sir. Come here. Swing that cargo boom loose. You see, it's a good thing I prepared for this emergency. Just in case you got lucky and didn't get blowed up on your boat. Put that one over there. Put them here. Them ain't bombs. The real car goes below. You can be last because you're the head nuisance. the old-fashioned way of walking the plank. One of the biggest men in New York. He is. Got a lot of pull, huh? <laughs> I assure you that he has. He could get me to work for this? Indeed he could. And will. We'll fix that. You see, there won't be anybody left to tell any influential mugs what happened here? Get me? 
Yes. So we'll just say you were all bowed up on the course there. <laughs> <laughs> we, we weren't thrown up on the course there. Oh, yes, you was. Well, well, what are you going to do? Don't get anxious, sweetheart. You'll find out soon enough. <laughs> Fish face, yes, sir. That dame goes next. Well, that's murder. Come on, work fast. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Look at Walt. He's going to throw a bomb. Take this heister off me. He's playing the neck. He ain't got a gun. Go for and throw the bomb on account of the amateur. Get those machine guns. Your hands. Throw those gats on the deck. Get two boats over. That's fine. I got it. You won't always be lucky, amateur. Pull back. I'll get him. Give me your hand, sir. Here, th there's your hat, sir. Now roll, you murderers. Roll before I change my mind. Take the wheel. Stay south by east. Get the jib up. Where to, sir? What do you think? We're delivering this cargo of Paul Roger. Two things I don't understand, Hawks. Why you ever went into this business, and why, having gone into it, you are quitting it now. You should, Mr. Corning. As you told me once, the cardinal principle of business success was to get out from under while the going was good and let the other fellow hold the bag. I'll make you out a check for the Paul Roger FOB Sultana. Uh, Mr. Corning, would you please make out that check for uh, $85,000? What? Why, that's double the agreed amount. Sure, that's all. Have you gone crazy? No. But I've acquired the nerve that it takes to succeed in the business world according to your standards. Now, I'm going to give you just one minute to make out that check, bootlegger. Bootlegger? Same thing. Your financial backer, one of the biggest in the game, Big John. You can't prove that. Oh, yes, I can. I've been hijacking Big John and selling your own stuff right back to you. What? You mean to say the stuff you just put aboard here is my property? <laughs> sure. When you pay for it. <laughs> well, now, you just try making me pay for it. Now, you listen to me. For once in your life, you're going to do exactly as you're told. If you don't, I'll sail the ship, your cargo of booze, and your whole crowd straight to the barge office and deliver her to the Federal Prohibition Authorities. Why? I 
have one of Big John's machine guns on the forward deck. And my men are the only ones who know how to shoot it. This is a holdup. You made a bona fide deal with me, and you're an honor buyer. What's honor got to do with this? You didn't believe in honor in Wall Street. Why should I on the high seas? But I thought... You have no right to think. Any more than I had in your office. I'm making this deal, and I'm making this price. Now, you write that check, and write it quick. Work is a little rough, Fox. Yeah? <laughs> Just about as rough as yours. When you wanted me to trade your worthless Venezuela oil stocks for that poor woman's good securities. Practicing philanthropy? No. No, I just wanted to prove to you that uh, with your high-handed business methods, it's really quite easy for anybody to make good. Yeah. But you'll find, Mr. Corning, that sharpshooting never pays in the end. There's your check. And, uh, and tell that charming daughter of yours, the three presidents were born in my state. That proves they're not all yaps where I come from. Oh. So then I'm not the only one of my family you wanted to prove something to. You're right. She... So long, Mr. Corning. Wait a minute. Come back here. Sure. Sit down. Thanks. Now I want to tell you something. Here's a report on that Venezuela oil stock that you refused to trade off on that old lady. It's a good stock. Read that. If that company were handled by a man with guts and plenty of nerve, it could be made 100% and make millions. How would you like to be vice president? No. President. Captain. I want you to change the course of the Sultana and hit us straight for Venezuela. Yeah. All ashore, who's going ashore? That's us. Come on, Jack. Oh, come on. Come on. tells me you could have nicked him beautifully. Yes. You've been planning to beat him for two years, haven't you, John Deere? Now listen, don't call me John Deere. I don't like it. Oh, yes, you do. And I'm going to call you John Deere all I want. I decided that when I told Steve I was going to marry you. You decided it. Haven't you made a fool of me long enough? <laughs> oh, we'll come to that later. No, we won't come to it later. We'll come to it right now. I suppose you got rid of Bentick. And I dare say he was tickled to death about it. Oh, he was relieved. You stick to type, don't you? All your life, you simply have to reach out for what you wanted, and you got it. And now you're reaching out for me. 
But I don't think I'd marry you if you were the last woman on earth. I'm sorry, John. Because I do love you. Yeah? And when did you first discover this great love for me? The first moment I set eyes on you. Do you expect me to believe that? Yes, John. Oh, I love you so much. 